Welcome to Uncle's Channel. Thanks for watching today. And today we're going to do an unboxing of all the villains from the TMNT movie Mutant Mayhem. Now we did an unboxing of all the action figures as well as a pickup video where we found all the action figures at our local Target, Walmart and such in the last video. Check that out if you want to figure out, you know, the background story of how all these villains came to be in the collection here. But today's video is going to focus solely on unboxing the villains. But let's go ahead and start unboxing Superfly, Bebop, Rocksteady, as well as Leatherhead. Let's get started. All right, guys, the first villain we're going to unbox will be Rocksteady, and he's called the Mutant Muscle here. And um, the reason I'm going to unbox him first is the very first villain I got when I was a kid, back in the 80s with Rocksteady, and so keep the symbolism alive here. The long snout's the same, you know, obviously being a, a rhinoceros, as well as the uh, camo pants here and a tank top. I mean, very similar aesthetic. Even the weapon looks to be the same. And even as we a little um, shield, it's like a sewer. We're going to find out in a second. But the original action figure had like a little... Uh, uh, manhole shield. We're gonna see if that's the same as well. But let's go ahead and get. Uh, oh, before we do that, let's check out the back of the box. Uh, the back of the box, of course, the same stuff as the uh, other turtle video, where it basically tells you all the ones you can collect. We're gonna unbox all of those. And down here at the bottom, it does say a little bio about him. Rocksteady, built like a tank. Rocksteady is pure mutant muscle. Whether it's from his fist or his horn, you do not want to take a hit from this guy. He and Bebop make a dangerous duo, but their brains are what some may consider small even for morons. That gum, quite an insult to Rocksteady, but they were never known for their uh, brightness inside the show either. But let's go ahead and uh, get this figure out of the box and examine it and see if it holds up. All right, so we got Rocksteady out of the main plastic. Of course, we're gonna take him out more here in a second. The first thing of note here is he has a actual different arm or, oh my gosh. So the figure is just simply too large for the packaging here. So they put the extra arm down here. How bizarre is that? That's a weird little uh, design choice for packaging, but ultimately doesn't matter for the figure itself. But the paint job on Rocksteady, excellent there. The detail, just like I said in the other video for the individual turtles, all of the um, figures here are gonna have sort of what I call a uh, jagged edge design. And what I mean by that is it's not like it's rough to touch or anything like that, is they're doing jagged edges to match the um, cartoon style that the movie portrays inside Mutant Mayhem. But um, overall, I like the look of him, but let's go ahead and get him out of the plastic. All right, so we have here, we do have his uh, weapon rack, and I do love that they're including weapon racks in all of these figures. And just like I thought, it has the little shield here made out of a manhole cover. It is smaller, I will say that, but that's not a huge deal. Also has a sledgehammer, which is a cool little weapon, a knife, as well as a backup gun, which does fit with Rocksteady pretty darn well here. And so let's go ahead and get him out of the package. All right, we did have a runaway arm there for a second. Let's see exactly how this arm fits in here. It should be pretty uh, easy. I tell you, if someone tried to sell you this toy, you would immediately think it's a, a broken toy. But um, it's just a unique design for packaging. And so I assume you just sort of push it in there. Um, I don't want to break it, but it wouldn't go in any other way. So let's just give it a good shove. That gun that's tough going in. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like you're breaking it. There it goes, man. Man alive, that is a tough going in of that arm. But uh, once it's in there, <laughs> that head is uh, certainly something. Good gracious. I'm not sure if I like that head or not. I don't know, I actually think I do like it. It's just a very um, distinct and looking around style. Maybe it's in the movie as well. Uh, that is a very unique head action. It's a little bit on the loose side, uh, but still pretty cool there. Uh, a lot of points of articulation as well. Of course, just like the turtles, not as many. Well, I take that back. You can even move his little knees. I didn't expect that. I'm not going to lie. He's got a very cartoonish, very funny looking little design here. <laughs> I like him quite a bit. He is just a very unique figure. I'm not sure if his head is supposed to be as loose as it is there, but um, that could just be my version of the figure that I picked up. But let's go and get his weapon in his hand here. Just like in the old days, got his little uh, machine gun and fits in the hand perfectly. I know a lot of the older figures, when you put the weapons in their hands, sort of flopped around a little bit. Not the case on these Mutant Mayhem figures. They all fit in their hand literally just perfectly. Got some sort of little tattoo on the side here or something. Uh, maybe tattoo, maybe just simply be a little extension of the bracelet. Not exactly sure. Got the cargo pants in the back. Of course, got the little strap coming across. Um, overall, great design for Rocksteady. I'm quite a fan of the head action. Wasn't really sure what to think about it first, but um, I have to say, 
Rocksteady has won me over from, from a figure I wasn't that excited to unbox to now being um, one of my favorite turtle figures that I, I've seen as of recently. So, very cool figure. Let's move on to our next one. All right, up next we have Bebop to go along with Rocksteady. And uh, it says Jacked Up Warthog. And I have to say, like, he's a big figure here and it's actually a pretty heavy package compared to all of the other figures I picked up today. I picked up a nine total. This is by far the heaviest one. And I guess it makes sense. I mean, he is literally a warthog here. And same thing with Rocksteady. They kept the exact same um, type of outfit from the old figures all the way down to, uh, you know, like the little knee pad here. I'm thinking the knee pad in the original one had like a skull on it. Is that just my imagination or is that what it was supposed to look like in the original one? And of course, even got the little uh, arm or shoulder pads there or uh, little shoulder guards. A little shape of turtle shells. Very cool. Same thing for the uh, sunglasses or the uh, shades there. They have the same purple ones from the show. Uh, the tattoo on the chest, it says, wow. Maybe it says, supposed to say mom if he's looking at it from his angle. I don't know. Maybe it's going to be explained in the movie. Uh, very unique little design there. But let's go ahead and get him unboxed and see if the figure holds up. Oh, almost forgot again. We need to look at the back before we do that. Bebop, he has a very um, short bio here. Bebop may be a jacked up warthog mutant, but he likes to roll in style. He's always sporting some killer shades and is never too far from a boombox. Do we get a boombox in there? I certainly hope so. But uh, let's go ahead and get him unboxed here. All right, so we got Bebop coming out of the um, original plastic. And you can see, once again, the paint jobs on these are just so well done. Like I can't get over, especially for like the original Turtles we unboxed earlier, the paint job was just uh, phenomenal. And same thing for this. I mean, yeah, it's not like as bright or as vibrant, but he's not supposed to be. He's supposed to be a uh, dull, sort of a matted looking paint job for a mutant pig here. And they did a fantastic job of that. I mean, even down to like the uh, little nose ring. We're gonna get him out here in just a second. But let's go ahead and uh, unbox him or get him out of the packaging and see what he looks like. All right, as far as weapons go, it almost looks the same as um, Rocksteady's in a way. I guess the shield is not going to be a manhole. The shield's going to be a little trash can cover there. And uh, that's pretty cool. As far as the other weapons go, I believe this was the weapon the original figure had in the 87 show or the 87 line of toys. Uh, I'm not really sure what that is. But regardless, let's get into the uh, main figure here. All right, so we got him here. And my gosh, is the paint job excellent on him. I love that they went with sort of a dull color for the turtle shells, as far as just the overall skin tone of him as well. Man, even down to the shoes. I mean, they did a, such a good job with this action figure. The shades look great, the little hairstyle spiking up, the points of articulation are there. Uh, got the uh, painted fingernails, got the little uh, bracelets there with the spikes on them. Holy cow, this is a great looking figure. Yeah, the um, little nose ring there even looks uh, very, almost like it is an actual ring inside it. I don't believe it is, I think it's just painted on there. But um, holy cow. I will say his uh, head action is not as entertaining as Rocksteady's. It's pretty much what you would expect. I mean, look at him looking back and forth, like, hey, you know, trying to figure out what's going on here. But um, overall, a, a really good looking figure. Uh, they probably could have taken the time to paint his tail on the back. That's a little um, small oversight, but the points of articulation are there. Look <laughs> at those little itty bitty legs supporting him. I mean, he, I mean, for being a warthog pig, he's a he's a pretty cute little um, little figure here. But let's go and get his weapon in his hand and take a look at him as an overall. That weapon fits him absolutely perfect as far as like the size to go along with the action figure. A great looking weapon for a great looking figure. Um, still not a huge fan of the wow or the mom tattoo on the chest. I feel like they could have done something a little bit better on that. Not exactly my favorite. But outside of that, everything about this figure is just really top notch. And um, as much as I'm not really a huge fan of Bebop in general, I do think the figure looks really good. And I still like Rocksteady better. But, you know, a good looking figure and I'm proud to have it in the collection. Next up we have a Leatherhead, a Raging Cajun Gator. And I always wanted this action figure as a kid. I never had the original leather hair. That's a thing that I'm, I'm missing out on as a childhood uh, past. But this one here, I love the design already. I love the little, um, I guess, night sight goggles he has on him with binoculars here. Looks like his arms bent back a little bit. But that's something else that I noticed with the uh, turtle action figures I unboxed in the last video. For some reason they're um, not articulated perfectly inside the package. But when you open them up, it bends perfectly into shape and it's in great condition. But don't be uh, confused by this and thinking like maybe the arm is broken. 
It's not. It just simply is poorly articulated inside the package. And of course, you got a little shotgun down here, some other weapons. Let's see what it says on the back. Leatherhead is proud to be a mutant and all in on Superfly's plan to make more of them. They are down for causing destruction and mayhem, hence the title Mutant Mayhem, especially if it means getting to make a few more Boombas. I guess that's just like a giant boom, maybe it's like the Cajun way of saying it. Um, but right there, it sort of gives us more ideas of what Superfly's plan is inside the film. Let's go ahead and get him unboxed here. So he got him out of the package, and either the tail is backwards or they're pulling a rock steady here. I think it's just backwards on there. But um, overall, once again, the paint job, let's go ahead and fix that arm there, like I was saying. Yeah, see that arm is in perfect condition. It was just simply the articulation was bent back a little bit. Got the shotgun down here. Once again, that paint job, holy cow, look at the details on it. The fading of the green to the uh, pale white there. The red and the hat, man, just great. Love the figure. We're going to look at it in more detail in a second. But I can't wait to get him out of the uh, official package here. Let's go look at his uh, weapon rack back here. This is the first weapon rack, actually, that was not, like, basically um, rubber banded in there. And so he's got a few extra little um, guns here, a little knife. Got himself a little bear trap, makes sense, you know, for being such a hunter. Um, I don't have a clue what that weapon is there. Um, oh, is it like a fishing rod? Yeah, it's, it's like a uh, fishing rod gun, I guess. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments down below. But that looks like a fishing rod gun. Well, let's go ahead and get him and his gun outside of the uh, package here. All right, guys. So we got the tail turned around correctly. Definitely looks better. Um, I wish the tail was positioned just a little bit. Like, I don't know. I guess that's how the alligator's tail is going to be. It's not going to come straight out the back. Maybe it's going to be helpful with his uh, stance a little bit for standing still. It just looks a little bit on the, um, I don't know, the awkward side. Just coming out straight like that. Not a big fan of how the tail looks. The feet down here, you can see the guy's little uh, claws sticking out the boots. Pretty cool on that. I like his little, um, you know, his little shorts or his little pants he has on. I like his look as an overall. I do love those binoculars, those uh, goggles he has on him. Does the jaw open up? Does it open up? It does not open up. I thought for sure it would. It looks like it should. But um, overall, great paint job, great details. Keeping up that same little bit of the uh, jagged art style that we've seen on some of the turtles as well. And um, I look, uh, his hat up here, his hat come off. Looks like it might. Ah, uh, it doesn't. Man, so many pieces of the uh, turtles and the heroes came off. I was expecting a little bit more on some of the villains here. He has a little uh, case here for the shotgun. Let's go ahead and see if it fits in there perfectly. I'm sure it does, but let's find out. There we go. It does fit in there perfectly. Very cool for that, but, we, you know, when we have him displayed, he's not going to be putting the shotgun in the back. He's going to be holding the shotgun in his hand here. And let's see how it fits in his hand. Hand seems a little bit small for the gun. I'm not going to lie here. Um, no, it does fit in there just perfect. I'm not sure how well he's going to be able to shoot the gun like that. But he does able to hold the gun in his hand perfectly. Um, I have to say, I was really looking forward to this figure. I do like the head. And I do like it when you look at him from front on and sort of from the side pretty well, but something about that tail, I'm just not a huge fan of, but the um, overall design of Leatherhead for the movie, I am very excited for, and uh, the figure, I'm sort of on the fence about. I really did enjoy uh, Rocksteady, Bebop was super well done, I think Leatherhead is well done, it's just simply not uh, my personal favorite design, I guess I could say, but uh, regardless, I'm still happy to have him displayed on the shelf here, and uh, let's go ahead and move on to our next one. So we have the final one here who's going to be super fly or a fly guy as it says. And uh, already, I love the design on it. I love this giant mutant arm that he has off to the side. He looks like he's got the little translucent wings in the back. Ripping out of his clothes like he just recently mutated into this form. Which does lead us to believe he might be Baxter Stockman. And of course he's got some uh, weapons over here. Little ray guns and such as well. And is that a fly swatter in the back? It looks like it could very well be. But let's look on the back here. On the back it says... Superfly, a highly intelligent humanoid fly. Uh-oh, humanoid. Like he just came from Baxter Stockman, possibly. Superfly has lived in hiding his entire life, slowly amassing power in the criminal underworld. He's clever, charismatic, and confident. And behind those eyes lies a sinister plan that is unlike anything the turtles have faced before. A mutant menace meter all the way to the top. Holy cow. He is, um, look at that. Uh, as menacing as you can get. And so let's go ahead and get a Superfly out of the package and see if his figure holds up. I still wonder, is this gonna be Baxter Stockman in the movie since it's voiced by two separate actors? I cannot wait to find out.
So we got him out of the package here. Same thing for paint job and the details on those eyes. Look at that. Holy cow. Man, this is some detailed stuff here. Even the little fly legs. He is looking fantastic already. We hadn't even got him out of the full package. Let's take a look at his uh, little weapon rack here. We'll do that first. All right, the weapon rack. He does have a uh, fly swatting gun, which doesn't make a lot of sense since he is a fly himself. Did the Baxter Stockman toy come with a fly swatter? Because I think it did growing up. If that's the case, this may lend even more credence that this is going to be a Baxter Stockman. Not positive on that. Uh, my memory of the Baxter Stockman toy is a little bit on the sketchy side. But let's go ahead and pop Superfly out here, take a look at him. All right, the reason the wings went in a little bit tough is I was doing them backwards. For some reason I thought the wings would go up, but according to the box, that is not how they would go in there. And so let's take a look at him as an overall. Once again, those eyes on this figure, that is some amazing detail for those eyes. He got his hair in the back, which is different. Oh, Baxter Stockman also had hair. He had that little uh, uh, orange hair in the back. And so we got that as more credence. You got these extra arms down here, like an actual fly. Very, very cool. Look, he's mutated out of his shoe. Look at that detail. Very, very cool on that as well. And this giant, massive, uh, almost crab-like arm over here. Um, not as much articulation on that part of the arm, but up here, tons of articulation. Over here, the arm itself is got some articulation, not as much as the turtles. The uh, wrist doesn't turn. Wait, wait. Yes, the wrist does not turn. But um, overall, a really cool looking figure very villainous here uh, let's get his little weapon inside the arm the weapon does go back there and it fits actually really really snugly which is much better than the old figures where they just sort of flop around so that is definitely a huge plus but um overall very very cool looking figure um, i do enjoy the aspect that he is basically sort of bursting out of the clothes almost like the hulk almost looks like it could be a lab outfit to a degree look at that a little collared i'm thinking i'm probably reading a lot of clues into this being a uh, Baxter Stockman, even the little mouth down here. Look at the detail on that as the teeth are coming out. Man, so much detail was put into these figures. I mean, for $10 a piece, I, I just can't believe it's like such a bargain on all these Mutant Mayhem figures and um, very, very impressed. But that wraps up to all the villains. Let's take a look at them as an overall. So there we have it guys, the unboxing of all four core villains from the new TMNT movie. Will there be a surprise villain in the movie? Maybe, maybe not, we'll find out. But these are all the four main core villains and honestly the action figures are all pretty darn cool. My favorite, honestly, is probably Rocksteady, uh, which was a total surprise for me because judging from the first look at the figure, I was like, ah, eh, maybe, maybe not. But uh, the little head action, it, it really won me over. Bebop, super well done at the same time. Superfly, very unique design. Leatherhead, man, I, I like him as an overall. I really do. And the more I've looked at him, the more I like him. Just the, uh, the tail used for the propping up, it just doesn't look as natural or as high up as I expected it to be to sort of come out. But at the same time, you know, the original Leatherhead that never like even stand up to my memory had a really weird angle about him as well. But overall, very cool villains. If you haven't watched the unboxing for the four main turtles as well as Splinter, click the link up above for that. Um, really impressed with those figures as well. And um, we, our next video is going to be the unboxing of the Turtle Man. So stay tuned for that. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos listed up above. And as always, go out there, find a great game to play. Just simply have a great rest of the day.